Hi, are you ready to get educated? Following the popular original educational booster pack, the new educational booster pack Mark II is here to help you learn even more about Texas Instruments microcontrollers. I'm about to walk you through a few example projects on the new educational booster pack with MSP432 Launchpad. So if you don't have a MSP432 Launchpad yet, be sure to get one and check out its intro video at the links shown right here. Before we dive into the examples, let's take a quick overview of what's on the educational booster pack. You'll notice a gamepad-like form factor with a joystick and two large buttons. At the top of the booster pack, we have the two alligator holes for hooking things up externally with alligator clips. Towards the center of the board, we have a colored 128 by 128 pixel LCD, along with the standard 40 pin booster pack headers. A microphone sits on the bottom left, and a buzzer occupies the bottom right. Looking at the smaller components on the board, uh, we see the booster pack is also equipped with a digital ambient light sensor, a digital infrared temperature sensor, an analog accelerometer, and an RGB LED. Now that you're familiar with the board, let's jump into some of the examples that come with the MSP432 launchpad for the booster pack. If you haven't already done so, download the software examples package from the MSP432 launchpad's product page. Inside, you'll find the source projects that you can directly import into your IDE, as well as the pre-built binary files that you can quickly download and run the examples on the launchpad. Another easy way to access these examples is to go to dev.ti.com and use the online TI Resource Explorer and browse to the booster pack examples under the MSP432 launchpad. Press the cloud icon after selecting any of the booster pack examples to import the project into CCS Cloud. There, you can view the source code, build, and run the project straight from your browser. Of course, the same projects can also be found and imported directly from the offline TI Resource Explorer into your standalone CCS environment. Make sure you have the latest MSPWare installed so you have the most up-to-date projects. All right, so let's start with the accelerometer example. This program uses the MSP432's 14-bit ADC module to sample the X, Y, and Z channels of the analog accelerometer on the booster pack. Once the program is running on the MSP432, you can see the raw 14-bit acceleration data on the LCD. To make use of this information, you can try tilting the board to control the LCD orientation. Now that you've seen how to easily gather analog sensor information from the booster pack, let's use the MSP432 to interact with one of the digital sensors on the booster pack. Let's download and run the light sensor example. In this example, the MSP432 sets up an I2C communication to control the digital ambient light sensor. An illuminous value measured in lux is retrieved from the sensor and displayed on the LCD. Similar to your cell phone's auto backlight adjustment, we can use the data gathered to control the LCD's backlight. Make sure to configure jumper J5 on the booster pack to select the LCD backlight. As you can see, when I shine a bright light onto the sensor, the MSP432 adjusts the duty cycle of the PWM signal tied to the backlight LED to brighten the display for better readability. When I cover the light sensor to simulate a dark environment, the backlight dims in response. The last example I want to show you is the microphone FFT example that utilizes the CMSYS DSP software library from ARM. This library provides many useful functions such as complex math, matrix transforms and filters, and more to enable your DSP applications. Let's download and run this project now. In this example, the MSP432 samples the Booster Packs microphone with its ADC14 module at 8 kHz sampling frequency, and applies the real FFT function from the CMSYS DSP library on the input audio samples to produce and display the frequency bin data. MSP432's DMA module comes in very handy in this application because it utilizes the DMA's ping pong mode to automatically switch between two data buffers. This allows continuous audio sampling into one buffer while the MSP432 is performing FFT on the second buffer. To verify the microphone FFT example is working properly, I'll generate a 2 kHz pure tone with my cell phone and hold it near the booster pack. 
here we can clearly see the maximum energy at the frequency bin corresponding to our generated tone. This has been a brief look at some of the available example projects for the new educational booster pack with the MSP432 launchpad. All of the examples utilize the MSP driver library, which provides standardized APIs that are easier to understand and reuse. We've only interacted with a fraction of the educational booster pack today, so be sure to check out other examples available in MSPWare and Energia in order to fully explore the booster pack. We hope you found this video helpful for getting started with the educational booster pack, Mark II, using the features on the MSP432 launchpad. Thank you for watching, and happy coding!